I'm Chris Thacker, and this is the Curiosity Show at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. Today, we're visiting herpetology, and herpetology is a study of amphibians and reptiles. It includes a lot of groups, things like frogs, salamanders, turtles, snakes, and lizards. All of those animals are vertebrates, so that means that just like us, they have a bony internal skeleton with a backbone. Amphibians and reptiles are found around the world, and they mostly live on land. Our curator of herpetology is Dr. Greg Pauly. Greg's part of our Urban Nature Research Center, and so lately he's been ranging all around Los Angeles looking for the lizards that live here natively and also the lizards that get introduced. Hey Greg, how you doing? Hey Chris, I'm good. Good. Greg, thank you. Greg has pulled out for us examples of our three most common Los Angeles native lizards to look at. So we've got alligator lizards, we've got side blotch lizards, and we've got western fence lizards. So tell us about these guys, Greg. Yeah, so these are the three common lizards seen around LA. The western fence lizard is the most commonly seen lizard. Um, this is a species that people often see basking on walls or rocks or on tree trunks. Um, the side blotch lizard is in um, areas surrounding the LA basin, often found in sort of drier habitat where you have some rocks. And actually the alligator lizard here is our most widespread species across the basin and people actually find these a lot in their backyard. Now these western fence lizards are a particular favorite of mine. They're also called the blue belly lizards because these are the ones that you might see in your yard or around doing mating displays and they do these they do this, yeah, these so they're, push ups. They're doing these push up displays, often in a very prominent spot, you yeah. know, basking on a log or a rock. And that's all to announce territory ownership. So they're telling other males, hey, this is my territory. And they're trying to advertise to females, hey, look at my big territory over here. Yeah, and you could do a great magic trick with these. So this is the, also called, like I said, the blue belly lizard. And if you flip it over, that's why. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the ladies' lizards like this. That's why they've got this color. Every single one of these is uh, not native to this area, but they've all shown up here. In many cases, just in the past three, five, 10, 20 years. We've got a couple of geckos. This is the uh, Mediterranean house gecko. This is the Indo-Pacific gecko. And then we've got these great big Italian wall lizards and these Cuban anoles. They're basically coming in on nursery plant shipments. You know, goods are coming into the area through the Port of LA, you know, flying in with somebody, somebody moving here from say Florida, and these lizards are hitching a ride with them. So for example, these brown anoles are mostly coming in um, via the nursery plant trade. They were, these are originally from Cuba, but they showed up in Florida, were then introduced to Hawaii, again via the nursery plant trade, and they're now coming here from both Florida and Hawaii. And these are males, and it's hard to tell because these have been preserved, but they have this really unique structure called the dewlap. And so the dewlap is this extendable sort of flap off the throat. Oh, wow. And what they're doing is just like those Western fence lizards, they're signaling to females saying, hey, you know, hey, hey, look hey. at me. Yeah. And they're signaling to males, hey, this is my territory. Don't come over here. So this is a, this is a really interesting gecko. This is an all-female species. So these are both females. So it takes a single individual to show up. That single individual shows up. And the first one that was ever documented in the state was documented in Torrance. So these geckos, this Mediterranean house gecko, um, there are males and females, but the only reason we know about really any of these are because of citizen scientists. So the difficulty right. with studying these non-native species is that they oftentimes show up in someone's yard. Right. So someone goes to the nursery, they bring a plant home, and it establishes a new population of lizard. But how would a scientist ever find that if the person in that neighborhood didn't help us document them. Now, Greg, you've got a citizen science project that started a couple of years ago and it's still going on. What's, tell us about that. Yeah, so we have the Reptiles and Amphibians of Southern California project, and that's a project where people can just take a digital camera or a smartphone, um, take a photo, and either email it uh, to the museum at rascals at nhm.org, or they can upload it to the iNaturalist uh, site, often, which is really easy to do because you can just download an app, the iNaturalist app on a smartphone, and upload observations right to iNaturalist, and then we can see if uh, see what lizards are all across the LA area. And in some cases, it ends up being really interesting and exciting finds of these non-native species that haven't been documented here before. And in most cases, it's one of those native lizards that we right. showed earlier, and that's giving us an idea of where those species still occur across the LA basin. Oh, great. So so there, we want to see all the lizards, the natives and the introduced species. And Absolutely. we'll put down below, we'll put information about rascals and how to set up iNaturalist and how to contribute to Greg's citizen science projects. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for Absolutely. talking to us.